In this question, we're told that Crater Lake is one of the deepest lakes in the United States, as shown in the diagram. In the diagram, we can see the depth of the lake is labeled as 592 meters. We're asked to complete the chart by determining the atmospheric pressure, the gauge pressure, and the absolute pressure at the bottom of the lake. So we've got three things to find here. Now, first we need to figure out what do each of these words mean? The first thing we have here is atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure is the pressure due to the atmosphere. So quite simply, that's the weight of the atmosphere pushing down at the surface of the Earth. Let's head to our reference sheet to see if we can find a number for that. Here we're told atmospheric pressure is 100,000 pascals. And we're told the pressure at the surface of Earth due to the weight of the atmosphere. That's atmospheric pressure. It's 100,000 pascals at the surface of the Earth. Let's fill that in. 100,000 pascals at the surface of the Earth, at sea level. Now, if we're not at sea level, say we're at the top of a mountain, there's less atmosphere above, so the atmospheric pressure is going to be different. So this value is at sea level. So it's always 100,000 pascals at sea level, but it's different if we're at a different elevation, for example, at the top of a mountain. Okay, so that's atmospheric pressure. Next, we have gauge pressure. Now we're told here in our reference sheet, a gauge pressure is a measure of how much the hydrostatic pressure at a given point exceeds atmospheric pressure. So this is like any extra pressure as well as the atmospheric pressure. So I'm just going to label this as extra pressure. On top of the atmospheric pressure. So in this situation where we're talking about the pressure at the bottom of a lake, we have the atmospheric pressure due to the height of the atmosphere. And then we have this lake which is filled with water. And the weight of that water pushing down on the bottom of the lake is going to add some extra pressure on top of the atmospheric pressure. That extra pressure is called the gauge pressure. So that's what we need to calculate. Since we're talking about water, it's called the hydrostatic pressure that we're calculating. And hydrostatic means in a fluid that's stationary. So we can see here the pressure due to a fluid is the density of the fluid multiplied by G. G is the gravitational field strength multiplied by h, the height of the fluid. So our gauge pressure, or in other words, our hydrostatic pressure due to the weight of that water is going to be the density of the fluid multiplied by g, the gravitational field strength, multiplied by h, the height of the fluid. Now, because this is water, our density is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. As a reminder, we're told that on the reference sheet up here, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. So we can start filling that in our equation. Our density is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. G, that's the gravitational field strength on Earth. And on our reference sheet, we can see that here, gravitational field strength is 10 meters per second squared on Earth. So we can put that in here. 
multiplied by the height of our liquid. Now, our lake is 592 meters deep, so 592. So we can multiply all of that together to get the pressure due to the weight of that liquid. And that's going to get us an answer of 5,920,000 pascals. We can go ahead and fill that in here as our gauge pressure. So we've got 5,920,000 pascals. And I just want to make a note here that G was 10 meters per second squared since we're close to the surface of Earth. Okay, so that's our equation for hydrostatic pressure or the pressure in a liquid. And in this question, that's our gauge pressure, which is the extra pressure we have on top of our atmospheric pressure. Finally, we have our absolute pressure. So absolute pressure is our total pressure. That's our total pressure, which is made up of the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. You can see that on our reference sheet here as well, the absolute pressure equation. The absolute pressure is the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. So we can go ahead and calculate that now by simply adding together our atmospheric and gauge pressure. So our absolute pressure is going to be 100,000 atmospheric pressure, which was 100,000, plus our gauge pressure, which was 5,920,000. That gets us an absolute pressure of 6,020,000. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Pascals. So just to summarize, in this question, we had a lot of different components. Firstly, we looked at the different types of pressure. We've got atmospheric pressure, which is due to the weight of the atmosphere, and that is 100,000 pascals when we're at sea level on Earth. We've got gauge pressure. That's any extra pressure on top of the atmospheric pressure. So in this question, we've got this big body of water, this lake, and the weight of that water pushing down adds pressure on top of the atmospheric pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is the pressure due to water, and we calculate it by the density of the water times G, which is 10 on Earth, times the height of the water. Or that could be any fluid, it doesn't have to be water. Then our absolute pressure is just the total pressure made up of the atmospheric pressure and the gauge pressure added together. In this question, we have a barometer, which is a tube filled with mercury. So you can see in the diagram, we have this tube that's closed at the top, filled with mercury, which is a liquid metal. We're told the density of the mercury is 13,546 kilograms per meters cubed. There's a space at the top of the barometer that is a vacuum. So that in there is a vacuum, meaning that there's nothing in there. There's no air. Then we've got mercury in the tube and at the bottom mercury is filling this little dish here and it tells us the bottom of the barometer is open to the air so this mercury sitting in this tube at one end is touching a vacuum and at the other end is open to the air now we've got a special rule to add here which we're told in the question it says, as such, the gauge pressure due to the column of mercury is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So the rule we're using here is any time that we have a fluid open to the air, the pressure at the surface of that fluid is going to be the same as the atmospheric pressure. So we know at this point, 
it's the atmospheric pressure. And because the column of mercury has a vacuum at the top, a vacuum has no air, nothing at all in it. So the pressure in the vacuum is going to be zero. So that means that the difference in pressure between the top of our mercury column and the bottom where it's open to the air has got to be the same as the atmospheric pressure. So we know that the hydrostatic pressure due to this column of liquid metal is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So we're going to go and find our equation for the hydrostatic pressure. It's the same one we used before. Pressure is density times G times H. We've got density of the mercury times G, the gravitational full strength, times H, the height of the mercury. And that's going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure. Our goal is to calculate the height of the mercury column. Right now, H in our equation is multiplied by density and G. So I'm going to divide by density and G on both sides of my equation so that density will cancel out, G will cancel out, and we're left with H is equal to the atmospheric pressure divided by density times G. I'm going to go ahead and put in my numbers now. Now we're told in the question that our barometer, this apparatus here, is taken partway up a mountain where the atmospheric pressure is 60,000 100 pascals. So if you remember from the previous question, we said at sea level, atmospheric pressure is 100,000 pascals. As we get higher, for example, up a mountain, there's less atmosphere above us, so the atmospheric pressure is going to be smaller. So our atmospheric pressure here is 60,100 pascals. So we can put that into our calculation, 60,100. We're dividing by the density of our fluid. Now we've got mercury here. We're told in the question it has a density of 13,546 kilograms per meter cubed. And we need to multiply by G, which is 10 on Earth. So we've put that all into our calculator. We're going to get out a height of 0 0.444 meters. So that's the height we found here for the height of mercury in the column. Let's go ahead and fill that in to check we got that right. Yes, we did. Awesome. So just to summarize what's happening here, at the top of the tube, that's enclosed and it's a vacuum. So our pressure's got to be zero there. At the bottom of the tube, the mercury is open to the air. So it's touching the air. The pressure there must be the same as the atmospheric pressure. So we know that the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom, which is the hydrostatic pressure of the mercury, must be equal to the atmospheric pressure. So that's where this equation came from. And then we just rearranged it and plugged in our numbers to figure out the height. In this question, we have an open-ended U-tube. It's partially filled with water. Then an unknown alcohol-based substance is added to the left-hand side of the tube. The resulting liquid levels are shown in the diagram. So looking here at the diagram, we started out with some water in the tube. That's this substance here. We then added some alcohol to the left-hand side. So that's going to be this substance here. And afterwards, these are the levels that the liquids sit at. So even though this tube is open at both ends, you can see here and here, it's not closed, it's open to the air. The height that the liquids sit at is different. So let's have a think about why. Firstly, since our tubes are open to the atmosphere, we know that at this surface here and at this surface here, those are both touching air that's open to the atmosphere. So those must be at atmospheric pressure. I'm going to call that PATM. So both of these surfaces must be at the same pressure, which is atmospheric pressure. At the bottom of our YouTube, at this point here in the middle, our water there, let's call it P 
B for P bottom or P bot for P bottom. The pressure at the bottom at that point is the same whether we're looking at the left side and looking at the bottom of that or looking at the right side and the bottom of that. Since the water at that point is touching, the water flows continuously between the left and the right sides, that pressure is the same. So based on that, we know from this point down to this point, our difference in pressure there is going to be the difference between the pressure of the atmosphere and the pressure at the bottom. And the same on this side. We know our difference between the pressure at the top there and the pressure at the bottom is going to be the difference between the pressure of the atmosphere and the pressure at the bottom. So the change in pressure or the hydrostatic pressure due to the liquid all down here has got to be equal to the hydrostatic pressure or the change in pressure due to the liquid all on this side. Now, since at the bottom, at this point here, below that's just water, we know that the pressure here and the pressure here are going to be exactly the same because it's just water, it's the same amount of water, etc. So we can ignore that bottom part and just look at this part in here, above the water. So we know the pressure due to this alcohol here and the pressure due to this water here, those have got to be the same. So that's what we're going to use to set up our equation. So we know the pressure due to the alcohol in that column there is going to be equal to the pressure due to the water in that column there. We're talking about hydrostatic pressure. So let's go and remind ourselves of the equation for hydrostatic pressure. Here it is. Hydrostatic pressure is density times G times H. So we've got the density of alcohol times G, which is 10 on Earth, times the height of the alcohol is going to be equal to the hydrostatic pressure of the water on the right. So that's going to be the density of water times G, which is 10 on Earth, times the height of the water on the right. Now, you'll notice we've got G on both sides, so we can cancel that out. And we're trying to find the density of the alcohol-based substance. Right now, the density on the left is multiplied by the height of the alcohol. So I'm going to divide by the height of the alcohol on both sides so that I can cancel that out on the left. That leaves me with the density of the alcohol is equal to the density of water times the height of the water on the right divided by the height of the alcohol on the left. So now we can go ahead and put in our numbers. Density of the alcohol is equal to density of water, which from our reference sheet is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed. Multiplied by the height of the water, which we're given on the diagram here. The height of the water is 1.76 meters. divided by the height of the alcohol on the left, which we're given in the question is two meters. That gives us a density of 880 kilograms per meters cubed once we've put that into our calculator. So you can see all these questions are using the same equation. It's the hydrostatic pressure equation, which is density times G times H. They're using it in slightly different ways, though. Sometimes we're talking about the gauge pressure due to the pressure in a fluid, the atmospheric pressure due to the atmosphere, and the absolute pressure, which is the gauge pressure and atmospheric pressure added together. And sometimes we're looking at a situation like this one where we know that the surface of a fluid open to the air is going to be at atmospheric pressure. And we're going to use that to help set up our equation.